Emily, we've been hearing about the story all day, whether Cody made a bid for Avon, they rejected a $10 billion offer, but now we're hearing that, that they might be courting each other a little bit differently than originally thought. Tell us the latest. There's a lot up in the air right now, but I think what's most important to realize is that this fragrance maker, Cody Inc., which has had a string of acquisitions in the past, the CEO, Bernard Beats, is really big about expanding the company, is looking to possibly acquire Avon, which has had many struggles. We know they have possible FCPA violations, possible bribery in China, and you know, it's a struggling company right now looking for a new CEO. So what we're trying to figure out is if this is going to happen and what it could mean. And Avon has uh, not said much about this at this point, right? Avon is keeping mum. They just said so far they're rejecting the offer. We've heard a lot of skepticism that the deal is way too low. Perhaps Cody might up the offer. We don't know if they have enough money. So there's a lot to be figured out before this is set in stone. Emily, is this a good fit? I mean, they're, you know, on the face of it, it's, yeah, it's fragrances, it's makeup. It seems like personal care products ought to go hand in hand. Very different business models, though. I mean, Cody is a traditional, you know, fragrance merchandiser, whereas Avon is definitely not only a door-to-door, -door, you know, a direct sales merchandiser, but also heavily international. You make a great point, and I think what's interesting to look at here is that they're complementary. Um, Avon has pushed into emerging markets. It's very big in Latin America, which is a white space right now, and there's a lot of room for improvement, especially as Brazil grows, whereas Cody is a big in developed markets. I think something like 80% of Cody is in developed markets. It's really big in fragrances. They've licensed in a lot of big companies like Calvin Klein, Nautica, a lot of celebrity brands, Halle Berry, Beyonce. So that's what they have going. Whereas Avon is huge in skincare and that is booming in Asia right now. So they each bring something different to the table, not just with geographical reach, but also product opportunities. And we know that uh, Cody CEO has been aggressive with acquisitions, as, as you mentioned. How big a bite is this for them? If, if in fact it could go through, as you were saying a lot of people think it's a little bit low for an offer, but uh, if it could go forward, can they can they get this done? This would be the biggest bite yet. And actually, I don't even know if you could call it a bite. It would be <laughs> such a huge meal for them. They haven't done anything as big as this. In 2010, there were a string of acquisitions, um, skincare company philosophy, the nail polish maker OPI, which is really popular and trendy. And they've also gone into China and three years ago in Russia. So this is not new for them to try to acquire a company, but nothing nearly as big as Avon. And Avon is a direct selling company. It's run a completely different way. It's all about the sales representatives, the customers. So this would be really new for them. And Emily, you know, whenever you make an acquisition in these sectors, you're, you're running the risk of integrating these, these new operations. But I mean, Avon's kind of a wounded duck at this point. I mean, it's had troubles, not just with the criminal investigations, but also just with its own operations, trying to transition away from domestic uh, direct sales model into an international sales model. The CEO is on the way out. It, this doesn't seem like it's an easy pill for, for a Cody to swallow. Definitely not. This is, Avon is a little messy right now, and that's no surprise. You know, we've been writing about this for a while, and it's been in the news for so many of the different things that you mentioned, but I think that kind of bright light, the opportunity is really looking at the geographic reach. It has that emerging markets down. It's very big in Latin America. It has a very strong presence there, and the product opportunities that it could offer, but that's obviously putting aside so many big problems that it already has, like the CEO, like all the legal problems right now, that has cost the company upwards of $250 million. It's no small beans here. So uh, Avon stock up 17% today on the news. So obviously some investors liking the uh, the proposition that this could go through. Yes, and you know, I've talked with a bunch of former Avon employees, both executives and sales representatives, and there are two camps. Some of them are saying, we need a new culture. We need, you know, this will shake up Avon's culture, which is seeped in history, seeped in heritage and legacy, and we need something new. So let them go ahead and do it. Whereas the others are saying, the direct selling and the sales representatives are the core of the business. How could another company that knows nothing about that possibly take this over smoothly? So we'll see. And Emily, is there a, is there a white knight, a third party, that could step into the breach here, beat Cody at its game, and take over Avon? That is a good question. <laughs> and if we have that answer, I'd be happy to tell you. <laughs>